Hi, today I'm going to be doing the book Rapunzel. Retold and illustrated by Paul O. Zelensky. Long ago, there lived a man and a woman who had no children. As year followed year, this this way this was their only sorrow. Then one spring, the wife felt her dress growing tight around her waist. Joyfully, she said to her husband, We are going to have a child at last. The wife liked to sit by a small window at the back of their house and look down into a beautiful garden. Flowers grew there and rare fruits and herbs of every kind. The garden belonged to a sorceress who had enclosed in it on all sides with a high wall. No one ever dared to enter it. One day, as the wife sat by the window, her eyes fixed on a bed of Rapunzel. The fresh, the, the, herb. the herb looked so luxuriant, so green, thick, and fresh, that she felt a terrible longing to taste it. Day after day, after day her carving gr- mm-hmm. craving grew until she began to suffer from it. She became pale and wrenched. Wretched. Wretched. And she said to her husband, If I cannot eat some of the Rapunzel from the garden behind our house, I am going to die. Her husband was alarmed to hear such desperate words. He loved his wife dearly and saw no choice but to bring her some of the Rapunzel. Ten times, twenty times, he circled the garden wall, but found neither a door nor a gate. So, lowering himself through the window at the back of the of the house, he climbed down into the sorceress garden. Quickly, he pulled as much Rapunzel as he could hold on, scr- and hold on and scrambled back up through the window. His wife made a salad of the roots and greens and devoured it and devoured it with a wild hunger so so intensely intensely delicious was the taste that she nearly fainted as she ate yet the next day her craving for rapunzel was even fiercer than before Once again, the husband made his way down the wall and into the garden. But this time, as he reached for the Rapunzel, the sorceress rose up before him. How dare you come to here? You come here to steal my Rapunzel, he cried. Oh, oh, it will serve you ill. Have mercy on me, the man begged. My wife is carrying our... Such and longing, carrying our carrying child. our child. Um, she has she has um, seen your Rapunzel from our um, window, and conceived such um, a longing for it that she will um, die unless she can eat some. What am I going to do? The sorceress um, con- considered his words. If you say, if, if what you is, say is true, you may take um, the Rapunzel that you need. But in return, you must give me the child your wife will bear. The frightened husband did not know what to say. Rather than see his wife die, he agreed agreed to the demand. And when the child was born, the sorceress appeared in the room. She named the baby girl Rapunzel and carried her away. The sorceress cared for the baby, seeing to her every need. Rapunzel grew to be a child of rare beauty, with pale skin and ambulance and abundance and a, and a, a, abundance. an abundance of flower flowing, flowing red glow 
red gold hair. When she reached the age of 12, the sorceress led her into the forest to live in a high tower. The tower was a great column rising in the middle of the woods. Although it looked narrow on the outside, on the inside was large with many elegant rooms. Yet no door led to this tower, and its only window was at the very top. When the sorceress wished to enter, she stood below the window and called, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Then Rapunzel would unpin her silky braids, wind them around the wind them around a hook on the window frame and let them tumble all the way to the ground. The sorceress would grab hold of them and hoist herself up. For years, Rapunzel lived alone in her rooms above the treetops, visited only by the sorceress. Then one day, a king's son came riding into the woods. As he, near, as he neared the tower, he heard a voice sweeter than any he, he had ever known. It was Rapunzel saying to the forest birds, charmed by, her, charm, charmed by her voice, the prince fell deeply in love. He circled the tower ten times, twenty times, but found no entrance. How strange this tower is, he said to himself, and felt, felt he would die of sadness. In, in, inquired, he, inquired. he inquired at the nearest houses where he was told that the, power belong, the tower belonged to a sorceress who was keeping a young girl shut away inside. Day after day, the prince returned, hoping to glimpse the girl who, whose sweet singing had moved him so. One morning, he saw the sorceress appear below the window, call up, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. At once, the prince knew how he, too, might ent enter the tower. Next, The next evening, he stood under the, under the window and called, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel's hair came blowing down. The king's son took hold of it and pulled himself up. Heaven preserve me, cried Rapunzel when the prince stepped in through her window, for she had never set eyes on a man before. But he began to speak to her in such a friendly way that, that, that a friendly way that her fear was soon gone. Your singing was so beautiful, the prince told her, that that I knew, that I knew I must see your face, or my heart would have no peace. Rapunzel saw the young, saw that he was young and handsome. In her own heart, she felt a happiness she had never known. And when the prince, grown, grown bald, proposed to marry her, and then and there, she consented. They held a ceremony in the tower, and every evening after that he returned. The sorceress, who came only by day, knew nothing of his visits. One day, when the sorceress entered the tower, Rapunzel said, If you please, stepmother, help me with my dress. It is growing so tight around my waist, it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to fit me anymore. Instantly, the sorcerer, sorceress understood what Rapunzel did not. Oh, you wicked child, she shrieked. What do I hear you say? I thought I have kept you safe away from the whole world, but you have betrayed me. In a rage, she seized off the braids and, coil, and coils of Rapunzel's silky hair and sh sheared them off. Then she sent... A, a, the miserable girl into the wild country to live alone with no one to care for her. After some months in this wilderness, Rapunzel gave birth to twins, a boy and a girl. Once the sorceress had, had cast Rapunzel out of the tower, she gathered the cut-off hair, fastened it to 
the window hook. That evening, when the prince called up, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. She let their hair cascade down. The poor prince cascade down. The poor prince pulled himself up to the window, only to be confronted by the sorceress. Her eyes wild with fury. So you have come to fetch your dearest darling, she cried. Well, you shall not see her again. Rapunzel is lost, you f lost to you forever. She struck through. She struck through with struck with, struck struck through, through with grief. The prince left, let go of the braids, and he plummeted to the ground. Although the fall should have killed him, the prince lived, but his eyes were hurt. He could no longer see. Rent by the blind, he stumbled from place to place, eating nothing but roots and berries, thinking of nothing but the loss of his beloved wife. After a year of wandering in such misery, he came upon a wilderness where, Rap where Rapunzel was living with her children. There one day he heard a voice so dear to him that he rushed towards it. Rapunzel saw him and opened her arms to hug him weeping. As Rapunzel embraced the prince, two of her tears fell into his eyes. Suddenly his vision grew clear. Once again, the prince could see. He gazed at Rapunzel and their two beautiful children. He looked up at the hills beyond the rocky landscape and knew that he was not lost. The prince led his family out of the wilderness towards his kingdom, where they, received, where, where they were received with great joy. There they lived a long life, happy and content. 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 Great job.